Hi everyone, um, I'm Sumit Simwal and uh, welcome to the session of uh, Lightning Talks from the Linaro Consumer Group. Uh, we have Amit Pundir, John Stoll, Sam, Tom and Yunkin as well in the team. So a very short agenda, it's um, I'm gonna give very super short pointers about the uh, plumbers uh, and the Android micro conference that happened there and how it went, what you should definitely go and check out. Uh, John will update us on the ASP dev boards. Uh, Yonkin will talk about the Android LKFT and then we will end with Amit uh, talking about form factor efforts on the Poco F1 and Pixel 3. We do have an exciting uh, demo lined up at the end, so do stay till the end. Okay, let me jump right over to the Plumbers Android Micro Conference uh, bit. Um, it was a long, long micro conference by any standards. We had 16 sessions, four hours of micro conferencing, and then an additional three and a half hours of uh, follow up discussions. So you can go and check out the full schedule with slides and video links at the link given here. The follow up of the buff, uh, the follow up buff can be seen uh, at the link over there. Um, as to what got talked about, I think the highlights would be the GKI sessions uh, that Todd uh, and others spoke about. Then we had uh, Saruna talking about the firmware dev link and its upstreaming. Uh, Loha talked about integrating community projects into ASP uh, like Mesa and LibCamera and so on. And there was a follow up buff discussion as well. Then Song went on to talk about bootloader consolidation and there was some very nice discussion around eBBR, UEFI, U-Boot and what can be done to make things easier for uh, uh, people. There's a follow up buff discussion as well. Uh, we even had a session from someone at Microsoft on uh, SE policy. And this really goes to highlight the growth of the community as it has happened around Android. Um, in addition, uh, vendor hooks uh, setup was discussed and introduced first time to the community, incremental FS and updates, DMA buff heaps, the current state of Android patches. These were some of the things that got uh, talked about. So I would really urge you to go and uh, uh, have a look at the full schedule, slides, video links, and feel free to, uh, you know, uh, um, connect back with us uh, if you have any questions around that. Thanks to the uh, Android Micro Conference uh, Organizing Committee, which was, um, uh, uh, which was instrumental in getting this done. So over to you, John. All righty. Uh, hi, my name is John Stoltz, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, AOSP dev boards and just kind of update the status on that. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. Um, so when we talk about uh, AOSP dev boards, um, we're talking about uh, the Heike 960 and the Dragonboard 845C, which are both uh, 96 boards that are supported in AOSP. Um, and these are basically our uh, kind of test vehicles that we use. Uh, in order to test the latest AOSP userless space code with the latest mainline kernels. Um, and we're able to do that, you know, every RC1, RC2, et cetera. Um, and uh, that actually manages to catch a fair number of regressions um, that, you know, hopefully we're able to catch before other people uh, run into. Um, with these boards, we are also able to test uh, LTS stable updates, which I think is really important because that helps uh, ensure that uh, any vendors who are picking up those LTS uh, updates for their devices um, can have some confidence that, uh, uh, you know, there aren't new regressions that are sneaking in. Um, but I think also a, a really, you know, on, on top of just the testing, uh, an important part of these boards is that they become kind of a platform um, for prototyping and validating any sort of new functionality that we want to uh, add or try in AOSP. Um, and we can do that against the mainline kernel, which makes it a lot easier to push that code upstream. Um, and we've used that recently um, with a lot of the GKI prototyping work, um, as well as the recent uh, DMA buff heaps effort uh, in order to transition off of ION. Um, and we've also seen uh, inside of Google, these boards be used for things like the UFS inline crypto engine enablement, uh, where that was done uh, against these boards. And then those patches uh, got you know, very quickly submitted uh, upstream. Um, I guess next slide. So diving into the Heike 960 a bit, um, this is sort of, a, a, I guess, the test workhorse at this point with the kind of broad coverage of a number of uh, older kernels. So it does the Android 414, 419, and uh, 5.4 kernels. Um, at the moment, there is no support for Android mainline. Um, this is because Google is preferring that they would like to see the remaining patches that are out of tree uh, be upstreamed first rather than carrying them in their tree. 
Um, so this has the potential to make it that Android 12.5.4 may be the end of the line for the high-key 960 kernels in AOSP. We'll have to see. Um, Upstreaming, unfortunately, has been very slow um, recently, uh, basically with TyCycling not being involved over the last year plus. Um, that said, we have done some upstreaming ourselves and we've gotten uh, the USB uh, gadget support recently merged upstream, um, but we still have outstanding uh, patches for the USB uh, host mode, basically, um, as well as the DRM display and audio drivers. Um, also for this board, we, we are you know still using the Mali uh, binary driver. Um, unfortunately, we just haven't had enough time uh, to spend to uh, try to enable Bifrost on this, but that's something that we still would lo love to see. Um, one bright spot, though, is that apparently High Silicon has uh, hired Maro Chiab um, to push some patches upstream on the mailing list. And now he's focusing on doing the Heike 970, um, but that shares a lot of the same IP as the Heike 960. Um, so we've you know, participated publicly on the list uh, to take some of those patches, try them out on the 960, provide some feedback, make sure they continue to work. Um, so there is some possibility that we may see uh, some of the missing functionality still end upstream yet. Um, all right, go ahead, next slide. Uh, on the Dragon Board 845, um, over the last six months or so, we've been able to gain uh, Wi-Fi and HDMI audio support, which is very exciting. Um, it's supported with the Android 11.5.4, Android 12.5.4, and Android mainline uh, kernels and AOSP. Um, with the uh, Android mainline and upstream kernels, it basically matches the Heike 960 with functionality. So this is kind of nice to have this board kind of up and, and uh, parity there. Um, now, thanks to the Qualcomm landing team, um, the upstreaming on this is in a really good place. Um, the only patches that we have out of tree at this point is the HDMI bridge driver, which is already pending uh, in uh, the next kernel. Um, and so it should land in uh, 510. Um, and then uh, Bjorn has a uh, SMMU and IOMMU series um, uh, that's required to boot. And, and that's really it. With those, you can boot the device and kind of get all the functionality that's uh, there. Um, we do have a handful of patches that are related to GKI and the efforts there that we've done. Um, and these are basically modularizing upstream drivers. So drivers that are already in the mainline kernel, just enabling them to be built as modules. Um, and so that's something that we have uh, still a series of patches to, to work on getting upstream. Um, and this board also has been a really important, uh, basically a launch pad in, uh, to, to help with the uh, Pixel 3 and POCO F1 form factor work that uh, you'll hear more about later. All right, next slide. Um, as far as what's next for the dev boards, um, you know, we're going to keep doing our testing and, and validation of upstream kernels on the latest AOSP. Um, we're going to continue pushing patches upstream. Um, there's, of course, you know, issues and bugs that we want to solve with the CTS and VTS. Um, uh, one area that we've been maybe a little negligent on is performance tuning. And so I think uh, that should be something that, you know, we, we need to spend some time on the user space side of. Um, and then on the Dragon Board 845, we have uh, accelerated uh, video decoding um, that we should be able to enable here soon. Um, and then also there's work going uh, to improve the uh, camera IP blocks uh, on the board. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to get something like a camera how working on it. Um, as far as new boards, I, I, you know, I think we're always kind of keeping our eye out for what's out there. Um, for what might be next and what sort of features we were looking for. Um, but we also kind of have to keep a little bit of a skeptical eye on this because, um, you know, it does take a lot of effort to enable a board and get it working in Android. Um, so uh, basically, you know, if we are basically resetting every couple of years, uh, uh, you know, to, to build up a new board, we don't get to spend as much time doing sort of a, a more of that development work on top of the platform. Um, so we have to be a little bit cautious there, but it, it's one of those things where we'll kind of, ideally if there was a board that was already upstream, this would make this a lot easier. And then we have to kind of weigh that features versus cost versus availability. Um, but we will be, you know, of course, keeping up with new things. So I think that's next. I think that's it for me. So I'll pass it on to Yonkin. Thanks. All right, thanks very much, uh, John uh, and uh, Yonkin, off to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Yun Liu from the Linano Consumer Group. Here, I will give you an update on the R Android RKFT project. Uh, first, uh, as a, uh, yes, about the builds, we have more than 40 builds set up uh, for this project. Uh, they cover 
the version kernel versions from uh, 4.4 to 5.4 to Android mainline and uh, cover the Android versions from 8.1 to iOS uh, Master, uh, including the Android 11 just released this month. Uh, the builds also cover uh, both the 64-bit platform and the 32-bit platform with the DB845, Hacky 960, and the big board S15, both. Okay, next uh, slide, please. Uh, here is about uh, the test we run for this project. Mm, we have put CTS RKFT VTS kernel uh, test run for all the builds. Mm, we also have the CTS pre uh, submit test plan run for the DB845 only. The CTS RKFT and the VTS kernel test uh, have about uh, 63,000 test cases. Mm, besides that, we also have the CT, uh, four CTS and four VTS test and uh, some benchmark test run, for, run with the DB845 and high key 960 builds by weekly. Uh, the four CTS and the VTS test uh, have about 1.26 million test cases. Uh, the ben uh, about the benchmarks, we uh, have good time test and uh, the other 15 benchmarks like uh, the benchmark Pi and two two applications. Uh, currently, we mainly focus on the failures reported by the boot test uh, CTS RKFT VTS kernel with the highest uh, uh, priority. Okay, next uh, next slide, please. Here are some issues uh, we have with uh, the test and uh, the builds. Uh, first problem we is uh, the boot, fa boot failure problem, uh, which is often caused by the ABI broken problem with the JK kernel. The next problem is, about, is the ADB connection lost problem. Uh, this problem uh, often happen uh, happens after the reboot during the CTS VTS test. Uh, currently, we uh, resubmitted resubmit the jobs uh, to try again manually to work around the problem. Mm. There are often uh, network DNS related failures reported by the CTS WebKit uh, lab car models. Mm. There are also a huge number of uh, failures uh, on graphic and media reported by the CTS DQP and the CTS media models. Uh, for the uh, builds we set up, we needed to main, maintain the out of three patches for the platforms that are not supported by the Android Common Kernel by default. Uh, the out of three uh, patches uh, mainly uh, include the DTS file um, external models and uh, uh, changes that not uh, uh, still not accepted by the upstream, like the DRM changes uh, for Hacky 960. Okay, I think that's all updates for me. Thanks very much, Hongqin. Uh, let me now invite Amit to talk about the form factor efforts. Amit, over to you. Hi, this is Amit. I will be giving quick updates on LCG efforts to run AOSP with the mainline kernel on form factor devices. Next slide, please. But first I will start with a quick recap on why we put so much emphasis on form factor devices. So we have been chasing this one for a long time now, and you can check out John's previous presentations for the rationale and our previous efforts. The key takeaways are that it helps us avoid dev board functionality gap during developing testing. 
And secondly, it helps us validate and compare upstream solutions with the vendor solutions on the same hardware. And to be frank, working on a shipping consumer device is much more exciting compared to a dev board. So no more dealing with add-on mezzanines or capes or hats for extended functionalities. <coughs> Next, please. Right, so now to the main topic in hand, that is running mainline on a phone compactor device. As John mentioned in his slides earlier, Dragonboard 845C has a really good upstream support. So Pixel 3, which is based on same SDM 845 SOC, was the obvious choice to leverage this upstream support. But we soon hit a wall with display stream compression support, and we do not have a working display yet something which we are still working on. Luckily, a couple of us had access to Poco F1 phones, which is another SDM845 device. And building up on our Pixel 3 experience, uh, we got mainline booting on Poco F1 in a very short time. Uh, we have already covered it in details in one of our previous blogs. Uh, the link is in the slides for that. Next slide, please. Overall, running mainline on POCO turned out to be a good community project, with mostly us pestering our Qualcomm lending team or upstream kernel and Mesa developers every time we got stuck at something. Post-market OS guys were working in parallel as well uh, to bring up their OS on SDM845 devices. So we end up exchanging notes on enabling further features. Uh, from a streaming point of view, we are making a good progress as well. Again, as John mentioned in his slides, POCO F1 is blocked on missing SMMU bootloader mappings as well. Qualcomm Lab IBB regulator is already merged. Base device 3 is in Q45.10. And as you can see, we have few drivers and fixes which are up on LKML for review. And then there are some which are currently being worked upon, like touchscreen and audio amplifiers. Next slide, please. Uh, we have uploaded a video of mainline kernel booting on POCO F1. It runs uh, 5.9 RC1, but we do rebase our tree with almost every RC. So please do check out the README page for instructions and how to get started, because a lot of it is still in a to-do list as you can see in the slides below. Next, please. We also have Android GKI booting on POCO. Uh, again, since we already had GKI booting on BB845C, sorry, Dragonboard 845C, we got a head start. Uh, but it did require few downstream driver changes to build and load them as modules and a few changes to work around the restricted ABI symbols list, which John and Todd mentioned in uh, previous session. Next, please. On Pixel 3, there are no new updates as such since last connect. We do routinely test mainline kernel-based AOSP builds on that. And uh, Pixel 3 is still our primary platform to validate core downstream drivers like lab IBB and GPI DMAs, et cetera, and we help push them upstream. We are also working with Qualcomm landing team on BSC support. So if you are interested and want to contribute, then please check out our wiki page for instructions and FAQs. Next slide, please. And it is demo time. So over to Sumit for the demo. Uh, yeah, I'll have to stop sharing this for a, just a sec and I'll start the demo. So uh, what we have here is uh, a video call. Uh, going on uh, on Jitsi, which is also being seen here. What we see here is the POCO F1 phone. And if you see there is the, uh, it's running Android S, but running 590RC6 based kernel. 
and the build is of yesterday. And there you go. That's the that's running the conference that I was talking about, which is what I'm sharing right now. So we were able to. Oh, what happened? John, you were waving and suddenly you went away. I can see you wave on this. Um, let me see. Okay. For some reason, I don't see John here. Oh, there you are. So yeah, that's that's been the demo. Um, as you can see, touch is working, Wi-Fi is working, uh, video decode is pretty good. So yeah, that's been the demo. Let me just stop sharing this. And if there are any questions, so uh, John, uh, Saj asked if uh, there's any interest in using the RK399 SOC, 3399 SOC for ASP. Uh, and uh, John said it's something that we've been watching. Um, old further question about uh, in these various Android devices, do you know which ones uh, that uses the STI interface for Wi-Fi? Uh, that's the Hikey 960. Those are the only two questions that I see here right now. <laughs> 